Our Zen story this week is about spiritual bickering. It's like, what? I mean, you'd think that, you know, spiritual people would be the people that would get along the most, right? You'd think that because we believe in love, we all believe in love, so we should always be loving and everyone should just get along. Somehow it doesn't work out, does it? It, it always seems to go wrong in every single group. One of the reasons, actually the main reason, particularly if you look at this from the point of non-duality, well, it's in two, they're the same things. It's because spiritual groups are working on belief systems and belief systems are always divisive. You can believe in love and I can believe in love. Well, my idea of love is totally different than your idea of love. And how many times have you been in a situation where, um, you know, love, I mean, that's, that's a good example where someone isn't being loving enough or something, and you're putting your judgment of what looking loving enough should look like on that person. One of this one of the places where this is so obvious is in being a mother. You want to be a good mother. It's a, it's kind of an impossible task because you can't just always be good and be a mother. You're going to sometimes be bad. Your kids are going to sometimes be bad, right? Things are going to happen. It's going to just come up. You can figure out later, maybe you should have dealt with it differently, but it's impossible to do everything perfectly. You have to be willing to live in this, this constantly imperfect change and yet always being there as the mother. When you apply this to spiritual circles, however, it can get very, very confusing because everybody has a different idea. And particularly if you're studying some particular thing, it's going to have kind of rules or ideas, or if you do this, you'll be able to do it perfectly. If you do that, you'll be able to do it perfectly. Nobody's going to be able to do it. So there's going to constantly be conflict. This is also a metaphor for what happens inside of you. You have all these ideas, 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 beliefs, beliefs. You're never going to live up to any of them. And so you live in this constantly divided state because you are letting your ideas and your beliefs and things that you've read in books, you're letting that be the master of your life rather than becoming the one that is the master. So think about this, if you've, if you've done any of my studies about zero and things like that, zero is the only thing that doesn't have an opposite. Or you could look at it a different way. Zero, everything is the opposite to zero, right? There's either nothing or there's something. So the only way you can be divided is if you can, the only way you can be undivided is if you are always coming from this point of zero in yourself instead of coming from a point of one of your beliefs because beliefs can be many nothing is nothing same thing in spiritual circles the only way there can be zero conflict is if there are no beliefs. Or, I mean, you can have the other one where uh, everyone is forced to believe the same thing, like like in the story of Rinjai's cat, right? So what if instead the master said, okay, anybody who can't prove their meditation, they get shot <laughs> until you come down to the point where there's just one guy left. <laughs> and then for a short time, maybe there won't be any conflicts because there's just one guy left, right? <laughs> So this story is a perfect story about how divisions play out 
in our lives. And how you'll notice in the story how all the monks chose their fantasy over reality, except for the one monk, Rinjai, who just said, that's ridiculous to cut the cat in half. <laughs> so, I mean, ultimately, it's just a story that paints a picture in your mind. And the picture that it paints, the picture of clarity and truth and, you know, the single pointedness of Rinjai, this picture, the more the picture is without words, the more the picture is just a floating picture, floating, you know, in zero-ness, then the more this picture can start letting you know how to live your life, moving you in the right direction, helping peel that onion toward full enlightenment. And most of all, stop doing really stupid stuff.